hi guys i'm back wendy here so welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome and today i'm going to do my last boat tag for the month of april um i know i said i was going to do that last week but i um decided to do one more i was actually on pinterest looking up some uh, other stuff and uh, this popped up uh, because it was book related and of course i'm always looking at book bookish things on whatever app I go on and um, so I don't know the name of this I apologize if you know just comment below but um, I thought it was a cute book tag it's not that long and I thought it would be a great one to finish out the month of April so um, we're gonna do that and then I have two more books that I'm adding to my May TBR list so I told you if if I um, was gonna add any more on I would show you guys so I'm gonna do that I hope everyone had a wonderful week. I am glad that it is happy Friday. Um, I am so glad it's the end of the week. It has been a hectic long week and I plan to do some much needed reading this weekend. And my wish uh, for you guys is that you get to do the same. So I'm gonna start with the book tag and then I'll show you the books. Um, so yeah, I wish I knew the name of this. Um, I guess because it was on Pinterest. They didn't really have a name that I saw. So again, if you know the name to this, just comment below. All right. So the, your favorite childhood book. Um, I do have one besides Peter Pan. Um, there was this book in elementary school that was called, um, the ghost of Windy Hill. And I do remember loving that book. I read it like, I think five times. I really liked it. It was like a cozy, um, a ghost story, you know, and um, I was, it intrigued me very much because I read it like five times. I love the cover of it. Um, I might get it again if I can find it. I just love having it because I loved it so much when I was little. Um, the second question, I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to put my head down. I don't want to like look like I'm ignoring you. I just, I jot down the book tag. I didn't, I didn't put it on my iPad. So um, I'm just reading it. From, um, I jotted it down on a piece of paper. Um, waking up, book that got you out of a reading slump. I don't get in reading slumps, I have to say. I'm very fortunate like that. Um, there's, you know, I read every day um, consistently, except if I'm like really don't feel well or I'm just extremely busy. Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, I don't get in reading slumps. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate, I guess. At least I haven't yet. Um, so, yeah. A book that you had to read for school that you ended up loving. That, without a doubt, I know the answer to that one immediately, and that is To Kill a Mockingbird, which um, I am going to read again because I really loved it. And one of my favorite actors, Gregory Peck, is in that movie, which I loved. So, yeah, that definitely, uh, hands down, was like my favorite. Also, Of Mice and Men, too, was one of my favorites. Um, an author you love so much you want to read all of their books. You know the answer to this question. Um, I talk about him all the time on this channel because he's one of my very favorite authors uh, and just a great human being is, of course, Mitch Album. I have other favorite authors, of course, um, but I always talk about him because he is my favorite and he's such a great humanitarian. And um, I also found out, I don't know if you guys know, he has a podcast as well, um, which is great. I've listened to a few episodes of that. So, um, yeah, Mitch Album is definitely, definitely up there. And I've read all his books more than once. Um, book uh, with best action book or series that you didn't finish or intend to finish. I don't read series, so I, I this really doesn't pertain to me, this question. I just, I don't like series. So, uh, book you think everyone should read. Um, there's a lot of books I think people should read that I like, but... Um, I talked about this book too, but I even said, in fact, that this book should be read in school. And that is, uh, What's Easy Gave Honey Boy because of just the, the, um, the subject matter, you know, it, it, it's, I spoke about this all the time. You guys know, I just love this book, but, um, it talks about morals and it talks about like life lessons. So that's why I think that it's an important book that I think everybody should read. It's just a great book. If you haven't bought it or read it, read it. It's great. The next question is a uh, book that seriously affected you, your favorite series. Well, again, the series wouldn't pertain to me, but a book that affected me 
Um, I spoke about this book on my last video and, uh, you know, I, I told you guys I have like a lot of nonfiction too. I used to just read nonfiction years ago. Uh, that book is called The Barn Dance and, um, it's a true story, but, you know, I have to say it is, is very hard to believe this story. And you know what? It's for you to decide whether you think it really happened. But it is a true story um, that uh, a husband wrote. Uh, in fact, it was in the news. His wife gets murdered in the book. He has uh, children. And he ends up actually seeing her again. And I know it sounds, you know, I mean, I believe in all that kind of stuff. Um... I believe that we're just, you know, we're energy, that you don't die, that you just, trans, you know, you, you just transition. But it's to what you believe, uh, and if you think that this really happened. But I, I believe that it did, even though it sounds absolutely incredible. But when you read the book, all the things that happened after her death and leading up to it just makes it a great story. Um, and it's called The Barn Dance. So yeah, that book stayed with me uh, to this day. I thought it was an incredible story. Um, the next question is, um, favorite uh, book from five years ago? Uh, I have a lot. Uh, one that does come to mind that um, I haven't talked about yet on this channel, but it's a nonfiction book. It's called Dying to Be Me by... Um, uh, uh, by uh, Anita Morjan. Uh, it is an incredible story about, uh, it's kind of like a metaphysical book uh, too, um, or a life after death book. Um, in, like I said, I did read a lot of nonfiction. I still have a lot of nonfiction books, but this um, talks about a woman who died and experienced heaven and she, her whole body, body was riddled with cancer. Um, she has, she's been, I think she's a YouTube channel, uh, or no, she has an Instagram. She's on Instagram and, uh, she has met, you know, she's been live in a lot of places and traveled and talked about her experience. And in fact, Wayne Dyer, who is now passed, is one of my very favorite authors as well. And, um, he introduced her and her story and it's an incredible story and, um, it's definitely a book that um, you should check out, Dying to Be Me. Um, she talks about her, really her life after death um, experience. So I thought that was really interesting. And that book uh, is, I've read more than once. Um, the next question is, what book can you nonstop rereading? Any of Mitch Album books I've reread. I don't really, I'm not a big rereader uh, unless I really, like a book stays with me. Um, such as the one I just spoke about, Dying to Be Me, The Barn Dance I've read again. Um, I tend to reread nonfiction more than fiction. So, yeah, but I, a book really has to stay with me for me to reread it. So, uh, longest book ever read. Uh, a book, a long book for me is like 500 pages. That's a long book. And uh, I am like, I have a couple more pages in... Um, uh, Tree Girls in Brooklyn, and that's uh, just a couple of pages short of 500, and it didn't even seem like it because I so enjoyed the book, but um, anything longer than that, I really don't have the time to read, but, and uh, so I, and I really have to enjoy the story, so um, yeah, that that's a long book for me. The last question is, book or series you wish ended differently? Um, there are a few books that come to mind. One is Don't Cry For Me. Uh, I mentioned that a couple of times on the channel. That was a book of the month. And that's the story of the father that's dying and writes this whole book to his son who's estranged. I, I just wish he didn't die. I wish that, you know, he wasn't dying so that they could, you know, re reconcile and and have a shot at, um, you know, a father and son relationship. So that would be the book. But that is the book tag. Again, guys, I apologize. If you know the name of that, just comment below. But um, my two books for my TBR are The Little Shop of Found Things by Paula Braxton. This one sounds so good. Um, it says, Xanth and her mother, Flora, leave London behind for a fresh start, taking over an antique shop in the historic town of Marlborough. 
Um, Zamp has an affinity with some of the antiques she finds. While she touches them, she can sense something of their past and the stories they hold. When she has an intense connection to a beautiful silver chatelaine, she has to know more. I mean, this is like, sounds so, so good. I can't wait to read this. And I, you know, I think this is a series. Um, and again, comment below if, if you know that it is, or if you read it, because um, I remember seeing two other ones. Uh, this does say New York Times bestseller author of The Witch's Daughter, which also just that title sounds like a book I would like, but it just looks like a cozy shop and, and something that I would love to read. Um, this is about 400 pages, a little over 400. So it's not a short book, but, um, I think I could rip through this pretty quick because it just sounds like my cup of tea. So that's that one. And the next one is, this one is like, a, I guess a YA book, uh, or middle school. Uh, it's a rat's tale by Ta, uh, by Tor uh, Seidler. And I thought the, I thought this was so cute, this cover. That's what caught me. And then it has some really cute illustrations in the book as well. Um, and it is about a rat. Um, Montage Mad Rat lives a solitary existence in the sewers of New York City. His only delight are scavenging, scavenge, scavengering in Central Park for feathers and berries for his mother and painting the seashells his aunt brings him. One day he rescues the beautiful Isabel Moberly rat and upon escorting her home is introduced to a world he never knew existed for she lives at the, excuse me, wharves in a spacious crate among rats who look down at those like him who make things with their paws. Suddenly Montage is ashamed. So when he hears about the campaign to save the wharves from human destruction, he does all he can to help. But how much can one rat, <coughs> excuse me, really do especially when he's an outcast so that sounds so cute and um it's it's a short book it's only like 180 pages so I, I wanted to read it it sounds like a cute story that is it that is a wrap as I always say um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, like I said, I will see you guys back here on Monday. And comment below if you've read any of those books or if you know if that book, um, <clears throat> The Little Shop of Found Things, is a series. And if you know the name of this book, tag again, I apologize. Um, I just found it and I thought it was so cute. But um, I will see you guys back here on Monday. And as always, I'll see you later.